Uh, my name's Greg Farrow. You might know me from my blog at ethereumine.com or from my podcast called The Packet Pushers. And uh, these lovely people here are joining me today to talk a little bit about cloud data center connectivity. Uh, I'm going to give the people a couple more minutes to come on in, but I did just want to say thank you very much for stopping by and uh, listening to us about what we have to say. Do you think there's any more people out there or should we get started? All right, well, we'll get started then, okay. All right. All right, so welcome to this discussion on cloud data center connectivity. Uh, today we're going to be talking with three companies who are cooperating to build an international network, it's a European network, um, to connect data centers together. And they represent the three different parts of the life cycle of uh, the process of building out a data center interconnect network. It's quite high speed, it's quite high performance, and it's a very exciting opportunity. So the three companies are Digital Realty, who owns and manages the physical data centers around Europe. They've partnered with BTI Systems to produce the hardware and the networking capabilities that connect those data centers together. And then finally, Epsilon, who are the service provider who's actually managing and delivering the service directly to customers. And it's quite a unique partnership where we bring all of that together to provide a service. It's not many times uh, as a customer, somebody who consumes data center interconnect services, I forget that actually those, you know, that bandwidth that we buy is actually made up of people who've been put through a sausage grinder to turn it into a product, right? And what we wanted to do is uncover that. And uh, one thing that I, I'm going to push into in this session is I have a constant message is that there's really three points of a triangle around connectivity, that are around the cloud, right? The connectivity in a cloud is about producing three key aspects to the, your company. One is visibility. You want to see what's happening in that network. You want to get visibility into the service that you're getting and how it's performing. You want to have mobility, so you want to be able to move workloads from one place to another. You want to be able to see what's happening. And the third key aspect is operational speed. We all have bought carrier services in the past which have taken months to provision and not met your expectations because they did the wrong thing in the wrong place at the wrong time. And we are need to find new ways to improve that operational speed. So joining me today is Rob Barth, who's VP Engineering from Digital Realty, Eve Grillikas from Director of Solutions Market from BTI Systems, and Rum Mashibi, Regional Director from Epsilon. Thank you all for joining me this morning. Uh, first of all, I'm going to ask a question to Rob. Rob, tell me a little bit more about the collaboration between Digital Realty, Epsilon, and BTI. How does that work? Sure. Um, well. I think it's a, a rather unique uh, network partnering agreement uh, in terms of what, um, or where we sit as a carrier neutral data center provider, um, where Epsilon sit uh, as a carrier of carriers, um, and BTI's pedigree in the metro interconnect space. And it really was um, the coming together of those three elements. Um, to create this rather unique um, value proposition uh, for our customers. And that is unique, right, is because you're actually partnering the data center with the networking equipment vendor with the service provider company to make one single product for the customer. Yeah, and uh, also in terms of how uh, that's structured, the, the flexibility associated with the bandwidth uh, provisioning and those service provisioning elements are quite different to what you get in a traditional um, carrier um, space. So Ruma, from your point of view, you're the service provider, you're actually fronting to the customer and working with the customer to put the service together. How does this collaboration distinguish itself from other service providers in the market? I mean, if you take in, into the three leaders in, in the market, you have uh, the the power and the space of DRT and you have the next generation platform of BTI and you have the bandwidth uh, network of Epsilon. If you gather all this one into one product, that is the up, up, uh, um, upscale uh, product to their market. I mean, usually every company focus on their core business and doing the, th the same thing all the time. But when you join force with the three elements, this is a product that doesn't exist in the, in the, in the market. And you're well known for doing this, right? So you've been out there doing this for some time. Have you done these sorts of tie-ups in the past? I mean, Epsilon exists for 10 years and all they did in the, in the past was to deliver uh, bandwidth connectivity in a fast uh, way. So, you know, we always did our collaboration in a neutral way so we are not competing exactly our uh, carriers. 
but that kind of collaboration is unique for us to, to have a data center, uh, the most leading data center in the market with a top platform uh, network. So together that is a unique um, solution for us. No. Eve, BTI Systems makes the backbone gear that goes in between the data centers that the service is provisioned by Epsilon. What is it about BTI that's unique here? What is it a value proposition that we bring forward to the whole solution? There is. I mean, BTI um, has been behind a huge amount of the cloud uh, co-location and service provider networks for, for years now. And we've got quite a good reputation for being agile and flexible and actually meeting the high requirements of, of all of our customers. And what's happened over time is that our customers have asked us for not just the data center interconnect, but a data center interconnect that's really differentiated, mm -hmm. um, that can bring more value to the network than uh, what has been you know, offered mm -hmm. by sort of other vendors out there. And so what we've been doing with our BTI sort of intelligent cloud connect is offering a way to really net and bring together the applications with the network uh, which is something that people have been working on, but I think we're doing it faster and enabling our, our partners to be able to deliver those services faster because the architecture is, is coming along. Yeah, because the optical infrastructure that you're building, I mean, I've looked at your equipment closely in the past, and the optical infrastructure that you're building is just, you know, the, the, the speed at which I can have more bandwidth or less bandwidth in that system that... I mean, the technology has always been a problem in the past, it limited us, you know, it took a long time to light up extra lambdas and stuff like that, but your gear now has the, the, the software control linking to the hardware right from the start. Right. Um, I mean, first of all, you really want to be able to have a flexible bandwidth on demand for any of the customers, and we can do that in a multitude of ways. One is just through the sheer density of the platform. The other is really through the capability of lighting up um, LSP so that you can fill the bandwidth a lot better. So if you, for instance, need 100 gig to interconnect your data centers, we can make sure that the utilization of that 100 gig is at the highest possible percentage that you're comfortable dealing with. For instance, you can do some arbitrage, you can do some different times of the day shifting of virtual machines from data center to data center because it might be cheaper to do it at that time of day than at other times of the day. So we're basically establishing a network fabric mm -hmm. where you can shift those things around. And then we're also doing an incorporation of a service uh, level application aware module as well, where you can initiate services from any point in the network that can be delivered at, to any point in the network. So that's where the software comes in, yeah. sort of on top of a scalable platform. And that's really what's unique for BTI and the Intelligent Cloud Connect mm. versus, I think, the other vendors out there in the marketplace. Okay, so coming back to those three points that we talked about, visibility, mobility, and operational speed, right? So I'll ask Karuma first, like how, how do we deliver better operational outcomes for customers with, with Epsilon as the service provider? What's a couple of core values there? I mean, um, Epsilon connectivity is uh, more than 65 pops globally. We only have, uh, just in London, it's like 26 pops. Our capability is worldwide, globally. Once you enter our network, um, that means you are interconnecting to more than 500 carriers immediately with our cross-connect over there. So, I mean, that, that is the proposition when you enter that kind of uh, connectivity. It brings you more mm -hmm. visibility and uh, access to many providers. And, I mean, once you have that kind of um, coming back to the collaboration together, when you have that kind of... Uh, big, hungry bandwidth uh, customers sitting in the data centers and want to approach different metros in Europe and worldwide, mm -hmm. you could have that kind of collaboration So you've together. got enough bandwidth to move a VM between data centers. Like exactly. The classic example I have is a lot of um, cloud, people who are new to public cloud want to move a VM into the cloud and they want to burst it between two points in the cloud. Well, a 20 gig VM takes four to eight hours to move on a one gig line. 
right? Exactly. A lot of people don't realize that you may never be able to successfully V motion unless exactly. you've got lots of bandwidth. Exactly. And that's and this is, this is the collaboration we've set up uh, between three of us. We've built the network so once you are in the data centers of DRT, then you have the reach to our network, which we could provide you anywhere globally hmm. within the provision and the efficiency of provisioning, like a couple of days and not waiting for 40 or 50 days to deliver that kind of bandwidth. This is, I think, the, the best um, uh, solution to a very demanding uh, bandwidth uh, market. Sure. So Rob, tell me, for digital realty and for the customers that are in your facilities, what does that mean to them? Well, I think it's conscious of a shift and an increasing appetite for more distributed environments. So on that basis, um, I mean, associated with the, uh, or the degree to which uh, these carriers are pre-connected on this global network exchange, um, there's also the, the added benefit associated with a number of the partners, and, um, uh, and I stress this related to access to ecosystems, because not all of the touch points that our customers are looking for exist indigenous to our facilities, mm. and that ability to seamlessly interconnect with partners or alternative ecosystems in support of their business. It's is more a key than just power and cooling, isn't it? Yeah, oh, right? in, infinitely more. And I think anybody, there's... You know, anybody can plug it in a server and give it power and cooling. Yeah. It's uh, one of the things that I think digital reality brings into the market is, you know, partnering with companies like Epson, internet exchange points, the storefronts that you have, where you have all these partnerships with services that go along. That's the sort of value that facilities need to be actually useful. It's yeah. not just about power. And, and I think attached to the internet exchange question, we've tied those, or well, certainly the European exchanges into this proposition that currently is supported out of uh, two, two of our properties in London and a, a property in Paris with um, an aspiration to do a pan-European offering of that yeah. within the next uh, 12 months. Pretty good. All right, now I'm just going to pause here. Does anybody in the audience have any questions for us? Uh, just so you don't feel like we're up here talking to ourselves. Anybody got any issues? If you've got any questions, just throw your hand in the air and I'll get to you straight afterwards. Or I'll push on. Uh, so Ruma, I want to come back again and say, uh, focus some more on just some business issues very quickly, particularly how we draw value out of it. So what challenges are being addressed through the collaboration process between the companies here? I mean, the market uh, speak of itself. There, are, there is an increase of uh, space and power in the market since uh, all the OTT, the cloud provider, all uh, applications uh, really want the connectivity now and can't wait uh, to, to deliver it uh, for you know, tomorrow. They need these services today. So, I mean, this uh, increase in the demand of uh, power and uh, space in the market brings these collaborations to, to deliver that on time mm. and to deliver it in efficiency uh, wise. Yeah, because the, the big thing I get from the collaboration is that is that speed of provisioning. Because you're partnering very closely with the underlying, you know, with BTI for the hardware, your organization and with digital realty, so you have placement in the facility, I get the feeling that I could you know, walk in, ask for a service in you know, a couple of weeks and I could have bandwidth. Exactly. And globally, I mean, it's not only the delivery. If you don't have enough bandwidth and you don't have enough coverage, it doesn't mean if you could do it for three days. Yeah. So it means that if you have that kind of uh, abilities and deliver it quickly, that is the key to, to do it. It is for me. I am always want more bandwidth, right? And sometimes True. I only want it for six weeks or 12 weeks. Maybe I need to do a migration from point A to point B or something. True. I need some bandwidth for that. That's in the past has never been possible, right? I mean, um, for, for us, as uh, you know, my experience within Epsilon, uh, sometimes customers are coming and saying, I need a bandwidth for only one month because, you know, some kind of uh, cut in uh, fibers globally, uh, some attacks. So they are coming to Epsilon because they know I have this bandwidth in my core mm. uh, with BTI help. And then I could manage to deliver it within a couple of days. Um, I'll tell you a secret. Whenever I see a customer that wants a bandwidth within four days, I know it's my job. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's done because only Epsilon has a very 
it's not small. We are 150 employees and we are globally headquarters in Singapore. Mm. Um, but the efficiency, how we work and how we started uh, Epsilon 10 years ago is the, the fast delivery small terms of, uh, of a contract. Yep. So this is our core business, this is our DNA of so Epsilon. So that operational speed, that agility is absolutely exactly. what you're about. Um, so Eve, BTI is constantly developing its products, so what does your next generation network architecture look like? And how does it build those services that we're talking about here? I'd like to just uh, add to, to what both of these guys said. I think what's nice about this collaboration, too, is that we all have a sense of urgency yeah. in this marketplace, and, and I think that in, in itself is unique. I mean, being able to um, get services out faster gets Ruma and Epsilon uh, you know, revenue faster in their network, which allow, enables them to deliver more and more services faster and faster. So it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful collaboration in, in that sense. Um, I mean, the complexities that we're seeing is that the cloud gr is growing dramatically. I mean, we're seeing growth in the development operation side with multiple connectivity there, and we're seeing a uh, large amount of the private cloud um, and the enterprises starting to move you know, to the co-location where they want to be able to connect to the cloud. Mm -hmm. And so the combination of all of that is making things very, very complex on the network mm -hmm. uh, because there are so many different ways to go about it. You can go through the internet, you can go through some direct connects, um, and then you have a bazillion or hundreds or thousands of interconnections yep. that are all going to be need to dealt with. Um, so what we're looking at is trying to help solve that problem not only um, from the bandwidth and the flexibility of the bandwidth on demand between the data centers to do that type of arbitrage, but also to have intelligence in the network on the second layer um, that allows a fabric to be initiated in the metro and sort of load balance or be able to deal with any secure items and reroute as mm -hmm. absolutely necessary. And then on top of it, it sort of gets back to the value of um, increasing and monetizing the network. How can you initiate more applications? Because at some point, we're going to go beyond just sheer connectivity and um, connectivity to the cloud. There's going to be a level of being able to offer more and more services. And that's where you're, you've got a platform that inherently is built to just insert and start offering some of those services. Maybe security services, it may be load balancing, you know, between the um, networks or between the connections, but there's many of those services that can happen within the co-location area or mm. between the data centers. So what's nice is that our platform is looking at marrying and basically merging that application with the network processes. And, and that's not um, an easy thing to do. I mean, mm. people have been talking about it for a while. And what you have to do is you have to literally bring the compute capability of the services into the actual network as it's running. Mm. And that's where the real differentiator so this is, is for that, us. This is that concept of you've got the management platform that you have which provides visibility to the user, right? So Epsilon's got better control of the network because they can see deeper into the network. They can see where the circuits right. are, where the, you know, what the rotoms are doing, how the, the, the circuits are, are muxed around the whole system. It's all about you know, saving money by optimizing the network mm. and increasing the utilization of the network. Every 100 gig pipe, every 10 gig pipe should be as utilized as possible. Mm. But then it's also really looking at monetizing the network. You know, how can I use the analytics? How can I use the velocity of service? Yeah. You know, how can I enable Ruma and Epsilon to be able to initiate that service very quickly? One of the nice things that we have um, is there may be a service that um, we, we, we want to test out and you're, you'll be able to test it out and if it takes, then we'll be able to do some expansion on that and you just add more application modules. If the service doesn't take, well then you don't have to worry about it. So yeah. you have a, a very low first in cost of being able to initiate services that you never really had before and I think that's really key to, to anybody out there. Yeah, the DWDM gear in the past has always been you know, a truckload of cash. 
and, and every time you wanted to do anything to it, it took a truckload more cash with special priests who have magic wands and, you know, vestal virgins running around as they provision more bandwidth, right? Make it work, please. <laughs> you know, how does this work? Well, you know, and they all run around and do stuff for days and days and days. But in the modern era of networking, which is becoming more and more software driven, it's much easier to say, I want a new circuit and draw it out and away it goes. It, whereas, you know, and a lot of the older vendors, I've, and I know some of them, are struggling to deliver that because their platforms are built in such a way that you need a magic wand with a secret incantation to make the, the, the new services come up, new bandwidth. You know? Right. It's all about offering our customers a differentiated network, a mm. differentiated service platform, um, and with the sort of BTI intelligent Cloud Connect, we believe that there is a platform where you can have a lot more value to be added to your network than sort of a generic optical platform that would be out there. So Rob, looking at what Digital Realty is doing, what's the future of cloud infrastructure look like for your business now? As you build out those data centers, you suck more electricity out of the grid and then cool it. What are you doing for the customers? I think we, we uh, are certainly seeing uh, and anticipating far more uh, in the way of a distributed environment. Um, we're seeing consolidation um, to a large degree within the enterprise space, going from many smaller facilities to a few larger facilities, and the challenges those throw up in relation to now a significant scaling of the interconnecting pipes between those centers and how those are tackled. I think we're going to see an increasing uh, rise uh, in metro cloud cluster developments because of the operational performance and cost efficiencies of being able to do that within the metro or mm. the broader metro rather than what works beautifully from a marketing uh, proposition, <laughs> mm. the global reach and access into over 170 countries. Yeah. So, uh, so I, th I think th those are the primary elements of that. And then with that um, intra DC, uh, a, a, a heavy degree of virtualization and then followed by workload consolidation of those VMs yeah. within the building. So how are customers um, how are customers changing their cloud infrastructure? So today there's still a large percentage of enterprise customers, for example, who still run their own data centers, still have just moving into VMware. What does digital realty bring to them? Well, I, I think uh, ultimately, and uh, w what the Epsilon BTI platform builds on is a physical underlying layer zero platform that we have effectively co-architected, which is a large metro dark fiber ring, which is effectively a private backbone that affords the, the greatest opportunity for interconnect into the key metro gateways around the city. And then as an overlay to that, we have all of these services the just-in-time provisioning. Uh, I, I appreciate what I've heard in relation to the aspiration around how quickly new circuits are turned up. Ultimately, we want to get to a position where via a portal, customers are able to turn up uh, new circuits, uh, new optical circuits almost instantaneously. Yeah. And that uh, automation of provisioning is absolutely fundamental to our value proposition as a distributed cloud um, hosting uh, player. So, um, and, and we're also seeing on the back of these uh, initiatives uh, far more of an appetite uh, within the cloud and, and, and content um, service provider space for locating within mm. our data centers. Historically, uh, largely enterprise that's moving far more to um, a cloud content space. Let me take a slight deviation here. Um, in the preparation for the session, we talked a lot about Metro interconnecting and how you want to do Metro Interconnects. Does that mean including doing direct connections to customers as well through the Epsilon network? Or is it more internally between your own facilities? Is it, or is it a combination? It, it, it's a combination of both. So an appetite to obviously tackle the intra-metro play, which is the 26 odd uh, metro gateways that sit within the, the greater London metro, mm. but then interconnecting the, uh, uh, that on a pan-European basis and equally affording that same interconnect opportunity into other uh, owner-operator customer uh, facilities in those said metros. Right. 
as we get to the end of the session here, we've got a few more minutes for questions. If anybody's got any questions from the audience at the moment? No. So um, I wanted to just throw it back to Rumor again and say one last question I have is monetization models, right? As we transition from the previous one where we used to get locked into five-year contracts with the service providers, what are the new monetization models or operational models that Epsilon is bringing to the market? I mean, it depends on uh, the requirements. As I said before, if there is a cut in fiber somewhere and, and some customer need us only for one month, this is kind of a project we are dealing uh, very often and delivering it uh, mm -hmm. to the customer's uh, satisfactions. I mean, our, usually we, we, our usual contract is uh, about 12 months and uh, we do have, I mean, historically, uh, Epsilon started like uh, delivering E1s uh, within a couple of days for three months. Mm -hmm. So that's how we built our uh, core business, our core uh, network and customers. Mm. So it depends uh, actually, but there is the flexibility around that. Okay, so if people wanted to find out more about Epsilon, where would they go? <laughs> um, I mean, we are everywhere in the web. Uh, we have an office in London. This is where I'm based, and um, you could find us very easily. Great. Uh, Eve, anything final you want to tell people about how awesome BTI Systems is? Because I know that you're <laughs> usually about the awesome. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I think it's, it's, the market has shifted to figuring out better monetization models these days. And, and, I, and I think we're there to support our customers in, in any way to do that. Mm. Um, and, and I think there's, there's ways in the future, if I could be, you know, lean forward a little bit more, um, if we start thinking about location-based services and uh, preference models, there's a lot of things that can be done in the carrier infrastructure and in the cloud infrastructure that can really help enable uh, everybody to make money um, a lot faster and a lot sooner. And we're sort of thinking about those things mm. as we're moving forward. So. And that includes the end user, right? It's not just about the service provider or the data center provider, it's customers, because the faster you can provision a service up or off, you know, up, down, sideways, get it turned up, you know, that's also about increasing operational efficiency for customers. Absolutely. The end user is benefiting immediately because they're hooking on to a network that gives them immediate connectivity globally um, all over the world to all of the data centers, to the cloud providers in, in a very, very quick fashion. And they're not doing what the traditional method was, which might have been, you know, an internet hop here and there yeah. on, a, on a less reliable network. So what we're really talking about is a direct connect that's far better supported, far more reliable, and then you can offer additional services over that. And where can people find you on the web? What's your website? BTISystems.com. Go to our resource page, and we have service provider and content provider um, literature up there. We have videos. We have white papers. You can discover a lot more about there. Thanks. And Rob, from the digital reality point of view, how fast can you know? How can we help customers do things faster for virtualization? Uh, I think. Um, it's ultimately a function of what we have both indigenous to our properties and what sits outside of the property line that mm. dictates that uh, degree to which we can optimize supporting platforms for customers. And I think um, in many instances, um, the services will start to speak for themselves uh, moving forward. Okay, and where can people find you on the web if they want to track you down and start talking to you about stuff? Uh, digitalrealty.com, uh, or you can come and see us on our stand. Uh, and I'm sure Omo will be able to give the address. Forgive Thanks. me, I'm not sure where we are exactly. All right, well, that concludes our panel for today, talking about data center connectivity in the new era. If you've got any questions, the panel will be waiting here uh, afterwards if you'd like to talk to them. I'll uh, get any questions answered or ask more about the products and services contained in. Thank you so much for joining us today and we'll look forward to seeing you at a session again tomorrow at 12.10 where we'll be talking about something in a very similar vein. Thank you.